Hello, and welcome to another video on using the new Blender for video editing. Today is a fun one. We're going to talk about how to add an animated GIF or GIF into your Blender project. So by animated GIF, I mean something like, like this, right? Oh, those little small animations. The extension is always a .gif. And you've probably noticed before that if you try to add it into Blender, it just doesn't work right. And let's go ahead and try to add that now and, and see that it doesn't work right. So I'm going to try to add it as a, an image sequence. So let me go ahead and get in there. Um, oh, yeah, I can't even add it. Uh, maybe if I remove that. Okay, there we go. Take the filter off. Click on that, add image strip, and nothing shows up. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to use a tool called FFmpeg. It's a free command line tool. It's really awesome. It allows you to do lots of things like conversions from one format to another. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have that GIF file sitting in this folder. I already have a terminal open there. And I'll show you the steps for how to run that conversion. So I'll start with just an ls command. So of course this is uh, Linux that I'm using. If you are using Windows, it'll be the same idea. You can do this in a, a Windows uh, command prompt, command shell. I don't remember what it's called. You know, CMD, and just go into that folder and run the program. FFmpeg is is uh, usually uh, I think installed by default on most of the Linux distros I've tried. For Windows, you'll have to download it. I'll put a link somewhere in the show notes. But anyway, once you are, you have a terminal open and you are in that folder that you, where you have your file sitting in, the command will go something like this. Start with ffmpeg and then dash i for input. And you can type in the name of the file. And here's uh, where you specify that uh, you're specifying a bunch of things in this this next thing that you type. You're, you're giving it the name of the output files you want to create, plus the format that you want it to save it to, and how you want it to number the different frames contained in the in the GIF. So I'm going to call it um, dude, and then underscore the part where you specify. The numbering is is here, starting with this percent sign. You say percent, you press uh, next to a zero so to give it leading zeros, and then the number of digit places that you want to have. So uh, two, then, that is what you need there, and then you follow that with a D, and then finally the extension of, for the format you want to save it to, and PNG is the way to go because that way you get the transparency. So that's it. Let me press enter. It'll show a bunch of text, but the key thing is that it's not showing any error message. Um, so if I switch back over to here, you can see we've got dude01 up until dude08. Right, and if I open it up, then you can see there it is. These are the different frames. Uh, and that, that was the animated GIF. Um, just before we get into Blender, let me get rid of these files and just show you what it would look like if uh, I had changed the command a little bit. So I'm going to remove all these dudes and I'm just going to hit the up arrow and I will change that 2 to a 3. Okay, so now with this command we have three n n number places. There's probably a better word for that. Um, and I'll just hit enter and then I'll go over to here and you can see now so we still have the eight images but now it's been named like this 001 002 003 so if you had a very large very long animated gif then for sure you'd want to use a command that that used three or maybe four I don't know I've never seen them that big but just putting it out there okay so we have our images now we can now add these images in as we normally would. So let's switch back to Blender. And I'm not going to 
insert the images right here. I usually like putting it into a separate scene because there's extra little bits I like to uh, deal with. Um, so what I'm going to do instead, uh, I'm just going to click over here to create a new scene and I'm just, I will copy the settings of this one. So it'll have the same resolution, uh, same frame range, but more, but more importantly also the same frame rate. It's always nice to deal with things with the same frame rate. Uh, then you don't have to use uh, speed control effects strip all the time to do those kinds of tweaks. Anyway, so from here, click Add Image Sequence, and I can just press A to select everything. And one thing over here is if I open this up a little bit more, actually hit that. You can see here there's something that says Fit Method, and it says Scale to Fit. If we were to leave that uh, as it is, that, that default setting, Blender will probably expand it out so that it meets the dimensions of the scene, which is 1280 by 720. I don't want that. I want it to come in on its original size, and I will adjust it later if I feel it's too small. So I'm going to change that to use original size. Okay, and now I will click Add Image Strip. Okay, and there it is, right there in the middle. And that's probably a good size for me. So, what do we need to do now? Well, obviously, if we wanted this animated GIF to run for the length of the strip, well, we don't have enough frames. And we only have that many. Way too short. So, one easy thing we can do is just duplicate this as many times as we need to. We will also likely have to adjust the speed anyway, because it's probably playing way too fast. Uh, so to duplicate this, there you can go to Strip and just say Duplicate, or the hotkey for that is Shift D, which is faster to use. So I'll, I'll click this now, and then you can see it creates a copy, and I can just put that over here. I'll, just, I'll let it go to red, and then it'll just position itself so it doesn't overlap. And then I will press A so that I have both of them selected, and now I'll press Shift D. Now I have copies of both of them, and then I'll keep repeating this process. Select everything, Shift D, select everything, Shift D. There we go. Let's see what it looks like. I'll hit the play, and that's really fast. That's like, that's way too fast. So let's try and slow this down. We can turn this all into a single meta strip, or we can do something a little bit easier, which would be to add an adjustment layer and then add a speed control on top of that. So that's not easier, that's just different, but let's go ahead and do that. I'll click Add, and Adjustment Layer. Oh, oops, I shouldn't have that selected. Right, let me deselect everything and then go to Add, Adjustment Layer. There it is. I will stretch it all the way out to the 250. Okay, and then to the Adjustment Layer, I will add the Speed Control FX Strip. So what we've seen before with the speed control is we adjusted the length of its input so that it, that would control how fast or how slow it was. But in this case, we're going to do something different. I'm going to uncheck stretch to input strip length. And then now we have this option use as speed. And there's a speed factor of zero and multiply speed. If we click the play button right now, you'll see nothing happens because speed factor times multiply speed gives you your speed. So zero times anything is zero, so that's no good. Let's change that to one and one first. So it should look the same as it had before. Okay, it does. Now we want to slow it down. So let's do a speed factor of 0 0.5 for half the speed, right? That's not bad. I can drop it a little bit further, maybe 0 0.33, that's reasonable. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now, now that I have this thing, and you know what, I'm going to name my scene. I'm going to name it just GIF, okay? And then now I can go back to the original scene and add it. I can add it right here, go to Add, Scene, GIF, uh, change the input to Sequencer, change Blend to Overdrop, and there it is. There is my animated GIF, and it's running a little bit slow. You know what, let me see if I can change this to use pro oh, use proxies is already on okay well it'll it'll look fine when we render it out but there you have it that's how you can do it and of course if you at this point if you wanted to 
change positionings. You could do that from within the scene or uh, with right here by going into transform. I can just shift this over by going changing the position X and the position Y. Okay, so that's basically it. That's that's one way. Before we go, I'm going to show you one other way of doing that piece of it. It's a nice and easy way of doing it, but there's another way to do this, which doesn't involve duplicating this as many times as required, because although it is easy, it's nice to have other ways of doing things. So let's get rid of the speed control effect strip and the adjustment layer, and let's get rid of all of these things. Okay, and that too, and we're left with just this. Okay, I'm going to stretch this all the way out to 250. And now what am I going to do? I am going to show you another way of using the speed control effect strip and combining that with something in the graph editor, which we haven't looked at yet, so that we have a looping animation. Okay, so what we're going to do here is with, we have this selected, I'm going to go to add effect strip, speed control, and once again we're going to uncheck that and we're also going to uncheck use a speed. We're going to use the speed control effect strip to control the frames that are being displayed. So uncheck that and now we have frame number. Okay, so I'm going to start that. Uh, it's going to be zero to start. So I will set a keyframe there. We know we have eight frames and if I go back to here you can see there it is one to eight but Blender likes to work starting at zero. So that means we have to give it from zero to seven. So we're at frame, oh wait a minute, I'm on the wrong frame. Hold on, hold on. Okay, let's get rid of this keyframe. Let's, let's make sure we're at, yeah, we're at the first frame. Sorry, so from here, we're going to set a keyframe here at zero. And then we're going to go up to frame number eight and set that to seven. So going up to frame number eight, and I'll set that to seven. Okay, and press I, set that as a keyframe. So I'm going to switch this to graph editor, bring this across, hit the home button on that. Okay, so immediately I see a problem, is that this is using the default Bezier curve, which isn't good. We want it to go straight from one frame to another frame. So let's right away change this. To, we will go to key, interpolation mode, linear. All right, so now starting at frame one, I'll just use my arrow here. And we can see as we go frame to frame, it animates nicely, but it stops there. We've got it set up now to go from the first frame to the last frame, but we need it to repeat. So we're going to move one frame over in the timeline and set to zero and press I. Okay, and it doesn't look like it's it took. So I'm gonna press Control R on my keyboard. I might force it, there we go. Yeah, sometimes that happens. You try to do some animations, it doesn't work, but if you press Control R, it'll do a refresh. So now that looks okay to me. And we needed that one last bit because now we're going to loop this whole animation. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit, you'll see what I mean by that. And so now the last step is to go to Channel and Extrapolation Mode. And this time we go to Make Cyclic. So I press that, and all of a sudden, this thing has looped infinitely. So if I hit the play button now, you'll see this is what it looks like. So looping endlessly using just the one image strip. And, and yeah, but of course it's a little bit too fast. So what we can do, we can use, zoom that in a little bit and I'll move this across. We can use the graph editor to adjust that. So I'm going to click over here. Oops, no, I'm not. I'm going to I'm going to pause that, and I'm going to click here, and then I will just press. Uh, actually, I would just want these two selected. So let me select those. 
and I will press G and X to lock it along the X axis and I'll just extend that out and see how that looks. So I'll hit play button on that and that's better. And now that I have it selected, if I wanted to, I could I could do some more. So I'll hit G again, and again X to lock it, and I could make it even slower by dragging it further to the right to lengthen this whole thing. Or if it's too slow, then I can bring it back over here and make it a little bit faster. That's still okay. Okay, so I'll let go. Okay. And there you have it. So now if I stop that and return to the scene, and, oh, home button on that, there you go, there yeah. it is. So that's how you can uh, take an animated GIF or GIF and bring it into Blender. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do give that a like and subscribe so you can see more content when it comes. Thanks and bye now.